guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to charge a 410A refrigerant system, all right, that has a TXV. So it uses a TXV as a metering device inside at the evaporator coil, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do to check subcooling is we're going to check the high side gauge, all right, because you need subcooling to check units with TXVs. We're going to check the high side gauge, and we're going to check the pressure, which is presently at roughly 285 PSIG. Follow it down, it's at about 92 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. All right, so that's coming off the high side line right here. As well, we have a temperature sensor right here hooked to our multimeter so we can check the temperature. So we actually have 92 degrees in the middle of the condenser coil minus 88 degrees coming out on the liquid line and we are left with four degrees of subcooling. The unit has a rating plate up here and it states that it's calling for 10 degrees of subcooling. So 10 degrees minus uh, four degrees and we're looking at uh, uh, a need of six more degrees of subcooling. So to decrease the temperature in this liquid line and increase this pressure, in order to increase our subcooling, we're gonna to have to add refrigerant. So here we go. So we've weighed in about an ounce, 1.7 ounces so far of refrigerant, 1.5 ounces so far. All right, what normally happens is you have the, the temperature uh, actually usually goes down when you add refrigerant and then it usually comes up and then it usually goes down to its final position. All right, um, it may stay at that at that temperature and then just fall after that. OK, we're going to add a little bit more. Now, if this was a system that had pistons or orifices uh, or capillary tubes, we would need to add refrigerant using the superheat charging process, which is on this gauge. But since it has a thermostatic expansion valve on the inside, we have to use subcooling. Uh, as a check for how much refrigerant is in the system. Right, we're at 92 still. We're going to add a little bit more refrigerant. All right, so it comes out of the bottle as liquid. It's 410A, so it's a, a mix of two separate refrigerants. All right. Um, so it has to come out of the bottle as a liquid. It's actually upside down right now. So it's actually going down, all right? And then you have liquid in the bottom part of the bottle and then vapor at the top. So this refrigerant's actually coming out of the bottle as liquid. It comes into uh, the service port right here, the yellow hose, the service hose, and then it comes through the liquid vaporizer and it changes it from liquid to vapor and then you're putting it into the vapor line. I'm going to add a little bit more refrigerant here. Because we have that liquid vaporizer, that's why we're able to actually open up that handle like we did. If this did not have a liquid vaporizer, we would just be opening it and shutting it or just barely, just barely open it. So almost it acts like a, like a restriction in this area so uh, that it uh, actually is able to boil off some of the refrigerant. Um, it'll turn from liquid to a gas before it gets to here, just due to the pressure difference, okay? A pressure decrease, it actually allows the refrigerant to expand and turn into a vapor. So we've increased in some subcooling here, but not a whole lot yet. And I am doing this a little fast. Normally I don't do it this fast, but we're gonna to continue to add a little bit more because what'll happen is you could accidentally overcharge the system if you add too much refrigerant too fast, all right? You gotta give it a chance to actually go down, you know, for the temperature to go down. But I really do like these liquid vaporizers. They really keep the system safe here. All right, we're at about 93 uh, degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. All right, and our temperature presently is at 85.6 or 86 degrees. So that's about seven degrees of subcooling presently. Pressure looks like it's going up to about 94, 87 degrees. 
I'm sorry, our pressure seems to be going up to uh, 290, and the saturated temperature went up to about 94, and our actual temperature was 87, so that's 7 degrees of subcooling. We're looking for 10 degrees. The temperature's falling. It's at 86. I'm right, gonna add a little bit more refrigerant. Like I said, you should take a little bit more time to do this. So there's always something else that can be done at the site. All right, whether cleaning cleaning up at you know at the job or whatever it may be, writing out your service ticket. There's things that can be done while you're waiting for the refrigerant to work its way through the system, uh, because normally when you're doing something else and you're you're you know paying attention to the system running, but at the same time you're giving it a little bit more time for this temperature to fall. You do want to give it a little bit more time than I presently am giving it right now. I just don't want to give you a 20 minute, 30 minute long video on doing this. I just want to kind of show it to you in a quicker way. All right, the, the thermostatic expansion valve that's located in by the evaporator coil, that's going to control how much superheat there actually is across that evaporator coil on the inside. All right, so all we're concerned with is the actual temperature decrease in the liquid form out here at the condenser coil. We can measure that through this liquid line. Because we have our gauge set attached to the, the port right here, we can read the pressure, which gives us the saturated temperature. Saturation means... Liquid and vapor both exist at the same time. And that's that's in the middle of this coil right here. Usually you have high pressure, well you, you always have high pressure vapor, high temperature vapor up top, then you have um, liquid and vapor that both exist in the, in the middle of the coil, and then down towards the bottom you would have your, um, the refrigerator turning from a saturated state into a complete liquid, and then the temperature difference between there and where it comes out at as a liquid, that is called the subcool. We're gonna add a little bit more refrigerant here. We're gonna be pretty darn close here. And like I said, if you didn't have this vaporizer in here, you would have to just be going like this, you know, as far as adding refrigerant. You would not want to put a whole lot in there. That's a vapor compressor. It's not meant for liquid to go in there. All right. And they have different types of vaporizers. The very short ones are not very good, you know, as far as uh, changing it into a vapor. These, these longer ones provide a little bit more room in order for that phase change to occur. And the liquid vaporizer here will get cold as well. And that's what happens at the evaporator quill when, when the ref liquid refrigerant hits a metering device. It becomes lower pressure, lower temperature, um, refrigerant, and it changes into a vapor. We've got 10 ounces in there. So far, we're at 85 degrees presently, and now it's going to start falling here a little bit. Now, if we were to go and do something else and, and let this system run for about 10 minutes, this temperature is going to end up falling more, okay? Let's see here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more and I think we're gonna be pretty darn close then. It's just a matter of waiting for that temperature to, to fall. The sweating on the uh, vapor line is a good sign that your charge is close, but is not uh, a complete, complete sign that you have a full charge, okay? 
when we came up to the system, we let it run for 10 minutes beforehand before touching the gauges. We purged the air out of the lines, uh, and then we went ahead and started adding refrigerant to it. Um, but we were at about four degrees of subcoiling when we started, and this line was already sweating while running. The way that you can confirm a charge after you're all done, after you've added in the proper amount of subcooling, is you can go in the inside of the building and take a temperature difference between the return air and the supply air closest to the HVAC unit. And if you have 18 to 21 degree temp difference there, then then everything that's like a confirmation that your charge is correct. You know, unless you're battling real real high humidity inside the building, if you have where you might have 16 or 17 degree temp difference. You know, it's definitely a way to check. You, if you get 18 to 21, then it's a confirmation that you do have a correct charge. All right, we're at about 90, 93, 93 degrees saturated state, and we're at 83 degrees here, so that's 10 degrees of subcore. All right, it's good to have either, uh, say, anywhere from 7 to 13 degrees of subcoin, so plus 3 degrees or minus 3 degrees will be within uh, the rating that we're calling for on this. Obviously, the closer, the better. All right, that's how you do it. Hope you enjoy yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.